How's everybody doing today? This is Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish. And as we've been talking about a little bit the, the past few weeks, it is coming upon coho season. And so today I'm gonna to tie a coho fly. And just in case you're intimidated by, you know, salmon fishing or think you're not ready to tie flies for, for coho, whatever it might be, I'm gonna break it down and show you just how simple this can be because if you can tie a woolly bugger, well, you can you can tie coho flies. And so that's what we're gonna do is just tie a version of a, a woolly bugger. So let's get at it. In the vise, I've got an A-Rex SA254. This is a size two. For the bead, I've got the Spawn football bead, silver, 7.5 millimeter, nice and heavy. Gonna get this fly down and in the zone right away. Just gonna add some wraps of 0 0.020 non-lead weighted wire. And this is going to just help me seat that bead and keep it in position where I want it. And so if we look at the bottom of that bead, do you see that space there or the slot? And then on this side, the big old chunk of meat. So that chunk of meat needs to sit up here on the outer edge of the hook in order for that hook to ride point up and do what it's supposed to do being a jig hook. So that's the way it's gonna ride. So that bulk of the, the bead there on the outside or underneath the hook shank, whatever you wanna term it, so that it, boom, pulls that right over and keels this hook. All right, there you go. Round over the edge with your curved scissor insides and let's continue with some thread here. So we've got some Vivas 140 fluorescent pink. Let's get that started, trim off the tag. And now for these weighted wire wraps, don't wanna go right at them. I mean, just position that weighted wire a little better. And now gently get some 45 degree angled wraps. And I'm gonna do that again and back. And now on this third pass, I'll just go ahead right in between all the wraps of the weighted wire and this just thump, pulls down all those little X's that we had just made. And now the wire, and because it's sitting into and behind that bead, both the wire and the bead are not gonna move on us. Get back here. I'm just gonna mark off with my thread where the end of that flat section on the shank is and come back a couple turns. So now for this tail, we have to remember that we're tying this to be oriented jig style. And so I've got for the first portion of this, some steelhead purple, UV purple, spay marabou. And this is from Nature Spirit. And so I'm just going to, you know, look for a nice section there. It's got some fluff on the, the ends. It's not all thin throughout the whole thing, but I want a decent clump of marabou for the bottom portion of this tail. So peel down a section of that feather and I've got the tips aligned there and that's going to be the dorsal side or the top. So we'll tie that in first and as you can see, this measures right around the length of the hook and that's exactly what we're looking for, just a little bit longer and that's perfect. Get a couple wraps on here and then we will check our alignment and adjust if we need to. So nifty little thing here, just use your bodkin and split in half or as close to in half as you can the fibers on either side of that hook shank and like so. So now I'm gonna look at it from this angle and it'll be a little bit easier for me to get those last few thread wraps in. And all I'm looking to do is maintain that the fibers don't encroach on the underside of the hook. I wanna keep that clean for the second color that we're going to add. So for now, I'm going to try to trim these as much as I can where the thread and weighted wire wraps meet. So right about in there. 
and then I'll give it just an, a little cushion here on the side and on this side and now I can just wrap this down and keep this underbody relatively smooth all the way from the tail up to the head as we continue to add elements here. All right, so now let's flip this guy over and add our second color. And for this one, I'm using UV Fuchsia, and it's also the Spay Marabou from Nature Spirit. I really like this color, and so do the Coho. And you could easily just make this a, a one color tail if you want, but I mean, we're, we're tying this to offer to the fish so if they're if they're willing to come and, and eat my fly I'm willing to give it an extra second or two and, and make them something pretty I think they deserve it so all I'm going to do now is just simply line those ends of those fibers up with the purple that we've already got tied in same deal a couple gentle wraps and then just make sure everything's under there and if it is we'll just continue to wrap down and make sure we go all the way back to where our previous thread wraps were for the that steelhead purple color underneath. Good. Keep it tidy. The fish will thank you. All right, same deal. I'm going to look to trim these off right behind the weighted wire. Like so. Taper it just a touch. It's a lot of fluffy material right there. All right. And then we'll just tie that in. And now we'll have a matching underbody on both the top and bottom of this shank. And time for some flash. And for the flash, I've got some UV pink crystal flash. Nothing crazy, but I am not going to be stingy with it. Um, once these coho are in the fresh water, and that's what this fly is designed for. We're, we're fishing this purple pink combo in fresh water. Um, they like a lot of bling, a lot of flash on that fly, so don't be shy. So all I'm going to do is double this. Actually, for this one, I can just tie it right in. I'm just going to match that up to where the fibers for the tail end and tie this in on my side. And one straight fiber there and then I'm going to come up to here and pull the rest of these guys over and do the same on your side and what I'm looking for is to get that flash to line it up roughly in the middle where the purple and the pink meet tie the rest of that down and trim these so that they line up also toward the end of all those marabou fibers a little fluff out and we are getting pretty buggy here pretty fast. All right, so here we got a nice tail, got some weight in the front, riding jig style, and the rest of this is going to be tying in all your components and then pretty much watch the magic happen because it all goes pretty quickly from there. First thing I'm gonna add some silver ultra wire and this is size medium and like everything else i'm going to get that end right behind the weighted wire wraps and then just kind of leave it on the side of the fly for now out of the way no worries full coverage and we're back in business the next element is some chenille, and I'm using some cactus chenille, and this is pink, and the size is large, very pink, but also very blingy. It's got that pearl inside of it, throwing light, reflecting it all which, which direction, and we're just going to strip some fibers off of the core there, and then tie that in right next to our wire nothing to it and now we're up in the front and so for this one you could easily eliminate part of this but I, I think you guys are ready for it so here we've got two schloppen feathers one fuchsia 
and one purple. And I've got the bases of both of them trimmed down to tie them in. And I'm gonna tie them in at the same time. And I definitely want the purple on top of the pink as I'm looking at it. So I'm tying both of these feathers in with the convex or top of their feather facing the hook shank. So the concave or bottom side, inner side, is facing upward. And the reason being, as we start to wrap that, then the top side is facing forward and the inner and maybe a little bit less attractive is facing the, the hook point and it's less visible. All right, so now we've got a bunch of good stuff tied in. Let's start wrapping some, some materials here. So before we wrap the chenille, I'm going to pull my wire, my ribbing wire, which is that silver medium forward and take one wrap behind it and then pull that wire back. And what this does is allows me to know that as I'm tying this, I don't have to worry about that wire being pushed and slipping back off onto the tail. I don't have to worry about any gaps in the wire because of being pushed off. And then I don't have to worry about a weakened fly because the wire moved. And I also don't have to worry about the chenille slipping off the back because it's going to be secured after we start to wrap the wire. So it's just a good habit to make if you're tying a lot of buggers or a rib with a lot of wire. It's one way to, to make your fly that much stronger. And who doesn't want to catch an extra fish or two on the fly? I do. All right. So we're going to go all the way up here. We're not going to be shy. Eventually some of these fibers are going to get tied down, but that's all right. For now, just get up there behind the head and really secure that chenille. All right, so we've got some good wraps there. And now I'm going to just take one or two wraps on top and in front of the chenille, and then I can trim that out without it moving anywhere. All right, so at this point, we're still just tying a woolly bugger here. And so I'll take that purple feather. I'm going to leave the fuchsia one for now. I'll take that purple schloppen. And instead of trying to get two or three initial wraps for a head, I'm just going to go ahead and start getting into these angled wraps. And as you can see, schloppen's quite a bit uh, bigger fibers than, let's say, a traditional uh, grizzly hackle feather, right, that you're used to seeing on this woolly bugger. But we are not fishing for the average stocked rainbow at this point. We're going after steelhead that have been in the ocean and our little silver missiles and coming to eat these things. All right, so now we're at the back, ready to tie this down using our ribbing wire that we started back here. So once you've caught uh, first wrap around that feather and trapped the feather make another wrap and we're going to make three all toll before we start actually working this into a ribbing wire all right so now the key to keep all these fibers going out and and just sprawled out every which way is to make sure you are constantly moving and shaking this wire as you begin to make your angled ribbing wraps here and just keep fidgeting with that wire keep moving it bumping it through there and you won't trap down very many of those fibers that you just worked so hard to put out so just take your time be patient wiggle wiggle all the way all the way and as you can see i'm not trapping fibers here at least i hope i'm not and we're almost to the front here a couple more of these wraps to go and this will be it so now I'm up behind the bead let me make sure I don't trap any of these purple guys up front now we've got it all the way here so one wrap over snug it and now I can let go of that wire and pull these fibers back just a touch to ensure I'm not going to catch any there we go now I can pull that wire back. I'm gonna go ahead and trim it out on my side here. 
Once I've got that trimmed out, I'm just going to use the tip of my scissors to push down. Well, maybe I'll use my thumbnail. Push the, that last bit of that wire down and then give a couple thread wraps to make sure it's not going anywhere. Yeah, that's nice and secure. All right, so now we're left with this fuchsia schloppen feather in the front that we tied in with the purple. So now let me just get that thread in front of the fuchsia. And you see I've got some of those fibers from the butt ends here. So no time like present. Just go ahead and trim them out as you see them. And just be careful not to cut that quill. All right. So now at this point, I'm just going to kind of relax that quill back against the purple and just start wrapping this as though it were any other collar. And what this is going to do is give us some really nice contrast against that purple. And it's going to be contrasted by the silver bead. And so you've got all the colors and movement that the Coho love all in one convenient fly that you probably know how to tie already. All right. That's about as full as I think that thing needs to be. Get all those fibers over. So right where it's going to tie off there, try to clean that quill up a little bit, hold those fibers out of the way, and then get your thread in between there. Like so this is a mean looking fly. There we go. Easy peasy. And let me trim out that last bit of the schloppen that we don't need here. And anything sticking forward is probably trapped and we can eliminate those at this point. There we go. And now just cleanly push some of those fibers back. Hold back with your off hand and make a neat little thread head behind the bead there. And we are ready for some whip finishes. And once, once we get this little tool here, we'll be in business. And we're going to do two whip finishes like I normally do. I hope you're doing really nicely on your whip finishes. I know it can be tricky sometimes, but stick with it. It's worth learning. All right, there's one. Let's get that loose fiber trimmed out before we wrap the second. There we go. And now we're ready for our second whip finish. And you can see all those fibers sticking out once they get going in that water they're really going to bounce and kick and this thing does have tons of movement like we, we said earlier it's got the the colors that the coho love and so for our last bit of the tying portion here's the purple schloppen that we tied in and a true test here is to go ahead and pop that out no need to cut and that's a nice looking fly. Let's go ahead and put some cement on this thing and call it a day. For the cement, we're using some Loon Hardhead Clear. And I'm definitely going to make sure I get all those thread wraps covered. This fly is going to be bouncing on the bottom. You know, probably getting a little bit too close to logs. Because uh, that's where they're going to be. But that's all right. And we tied it as strong as we can. And all we can do is try to put it in front of a couple fish. And I really appreciate that you guys take the time to watch these videos. And we'd love to see what you're tying. So don't be shy. Send us some photos. And there you have it. The easy peasy coho bugger. Fuchsia, purple, pinks, flashy. It's got it all. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit like and subscribe and get out there and catch some coho and we will see you guys on the water.